Welcome everyone to Jigsaw 24 webinar, supporting all learners with Apple. My name is Richard Poff, and I am an Apple professional learning specialist working at Jigsaw 24 as a professional development consultant. I work with a team of education consultants at Jigsaw, working with many schools and businesses across the country. Our aim, is to work on a strategic approach to ensuring the delivery of training is developed and sustainable with effective professional learning plans. So let's look at this question. How do we help our students learn today and prepare them for tomorrow? How do we know we are preparing our students for the workplace and beyond? Technology is key to ensuring that we are preparing our students for the future. We can use tools such as the iPad to enhance learning experiences. Young people of today embrace technology in a way where it is part of what they do. I see my, my seven-year-old daughter use technology and it fascinates me. I'm always blown away by what she can do on the iPad. But what wows me these days <laughs> doesn't wow my seven-year-old daughter. Not in the same way. Voice recognition, for example, is something that young people just know. We have the likes of Alexa, OK Google, Siri and others that can answer questions. For me, this type of technology blows me away. But for my daughter, it's just normal. To ask Alexa to play a song, spell a word, ask a maths calculation, research a subject, subject, convert a currency, tell the time and many other things. This is normal for them. So as educators, we have to embrace this. We have to be creative in how we teach. We have to find ways in which we can encourage the use of tools to enhance how they learn. We have to ask ourselves whether, as educators, it is our job now to teach knowledge, or is it to facilitate how the students find that knowledge? Knowledge is so accessible today, and we as educators can use the iPad as a tool to engage creative ways in which the students can design and solve real world problems. The iPad has the potential to support all different types of learners and all different types of learning styles. Take a look at these new job roles. Ask yourself if you know what any of these are. Big companies need to fill these types of roles and more, and more big companies are needing new types of skills. So ask yourself, what do these roles do? What I'd like you to do is Google them, find out, go and have a look and see if you can know and understand what these roles are. And then we've got to aim our education to maybe push in and try to get these roles fulfilled in the workplace. Look at the type of skills that are needed in many of the new companies that are coming out at the moment. We need to take a look at these skills and what these big companies are now looking for in future employees. How can we adapt our teaching so that we can incorporate these skills in the classroom. Take a look. Do your lessons tackle any of these skills? How can you change your teaching so these, these skills are tackled? So let's be creative. The iPad, it can really unleash this creativity. Students need to have the freedom to be able to create something that shows what they have learned. They need to stop asking for permission to be creative. Instead of saying to a student, today we are going to use and create a PowerPoint, 
why not say today you are going to create something that shows me that you understand what you have done today this way you can encourage all learners to think about what they can create whether it be a movie musical song ar presentation computer game infographic there are so many options and if what they create isn't so great <laughs> so what it's the journey it's the journey that it takes to get there that's where the learning takes place so let's take a look at what is possible on the ipad and it is getting better so take a look at the screen now and let's talk through these so we've got the microphone the microphone is there on the ipad enabling you to record your voice something that you cannot do with a piece of paper apple pencil apple pencil is revolutionized the way we use the ipad now and now with the introduction of scribble you can now use the Apple Pencil to write and it will convert it into text. Fantastic for all types of learners. The iPad is immersive. It's engaging, all right? We can use the iPad anywhere. We can take it anywhere we want and learning can continue. And it potentially is always connected. Connected to the internet via Wi-Fi. And if you've got iPads that do mobile, then you can connect it to your 4G networks. So it's always connected where you can. The iPad has two cameras. It has a camera at the front and it has a camera at the back. This in itself creates so many creative possibilities in the classroom on how the students can record their own learning reflections and insert them into a keynote presentation and then export that keynote presentation into Shobi so many potentials on how we can use the camera on the ipad let's face it the ipad is easy to use it's easy to open an app it's easy to find things on the ipad it's easy to use for the students that we teach and one of the most important parts of the ipad it is secure apple spend so much time looking at security and privacy with the ipad what is stored on the iPad is on the iPad and it doesn't go anywhere else. Finally, there are sensors on the iPad that allow the iPad to detect things in movement and things like that. Really useful as a learning tool. So the iPad, it's accessible. It's accessible and be designed for everyone. Did you know that the iPad could do any of these things that are on the screen right now. It's been designed for all types of learners of all different learning styles. The accessibility features on the iPad are phenomenal. Take a look at some of these and make a note of one or two. And after this webinar, perhaps you can go away and find out what they actually do. And we're gonna be investigating and having a look at some of these tips and tricks later on in the webinar. Go and have a look, make a note, two options, find out what they do after that, after the webinar. I'd like to now introduce you to a guest. This is Mike Warner. Unfortunately, Mike can't actually join us live today, but Mike and I met on a Zoom call on Monday this week and we recorded the session. Romansfield is a special school working with students with lots of special needs. Mike is the CPD lead at Romans Field, has been working there for the last two years and enjoys a variety of ways he incorporates SEN learning into his profession. He works as the subject leader for science and supports the computing lead to roll out the training for all staff linked with iPads, MacBooks and Apple TVs. Mike typically works with the older children in year six as they prepare for the next part of their education. He has, in the past, he has worked in further education and offender learning. So what I'd like to do now is play the interview 
with Mike from Romersfield School. Right, hi Mike, um, how are you doing today? Yeah, not too bad, Richard. Good to see you. Fantastic. Right, everyone, this is uh, this is Mike Warner. Mike's at uh, Romans Romans Field School, which is a special school um, working with students with special needs um, uh, up in Milton Keynes. So, um, so Mike, I, what I'd really like you to do first of all is really just maybe just give an introduction to yourself on what you what your role is within the school, and then really just tell us about your school. Okay, sure. Um, so as Richard said, my name's Mike and I work at uh, Romansfield School, which is in sunny Milton Keynes. Um, my role at the school is that I'm the CPD lead, so I kind of collate all of the training needs for staff and then try and map out with um, SLT how we might be able to achieve that. I'm also one of the team teach trainers, so I help our staff understand ways to de-escalate and divert uh, maybe poor behaviour into more positive behaviour. Uh, and I'm also one of the teachers here, so I work with a group of year six children. As Richard's already said, we're a special educational needs school, so we've got 55 children on roll, um, 53 of them are boys, and they're all primary age, so from year one up to year six, um, we group our children in slightly different ways to most traditional schools. So we group our children with, with main campus, so we group by chronological age, their level of and their kind of ability level. And broadly speaking, our children are two-ish years behind their age-related expectations. We have small classes, so classes never exceed eight children. And for classes that have got eight children, they would have two to three additional support staff. And some of the smaller classes would have maybe one or two support staff. And the support staff play a really crucial role in helping the children manage choices, the consequences that might come through choices and then kind of productively work on their schoolwork or whatever they've been set. Our children have a range of learning needs as I'm sure that the children will at all schools. So we work with children with um, social, emotional and mental health needs, children with um, varying levels of autism spectrum disorder and a whole host of, of different, um, different challenges to their learning. Um, but the, the main thing for our school is we're, we're a very small school. We mostly cater for boys um, and we've only ever really had two or three girls that have been on roll at any one time. And that's because we find that for the different diagnoses that our children have, boys tend to flag up as more obviously in need of additional support. We follow the full national curriculum. So our children follow all of the normal subjects. They have the same expectations set out for them. And we have a small group of children who have more profound learning needs that are on something called the RF curriculum, which is more about exploring the world around them, understanding how to kind of be independent and how to navigate the world a little bit. But that is, in a nutshell, Roman's Field School. That's, I mean, fantastic, Mike. And, and, and having, having come to the school myself and, and had the, the real way, it, was, it is a pleasure to actually work with you guys. I mean, it really was for me a, a great experience to work with you guys as teachers that are involved with the teaching and learning of, of the students within the school. And for me to really experience the type of teaching and the, and the kind of students that you are teaching. And it, it, it was fascinating for me. I remember the first time I went there and trying to deal with some of the behavior issues that are actually happening in the yeah. school. It was um. It, it really was, it, it was a, a great experience for me. And I've, I've learned a lot. I don't know about you guys, but I've learned a lot by being at your school and helping out. Um, so um, you've talked about some of the learning difficulties that you've got within the school. And you mentioned a few of the, um, uh, the things that are happening. Um, you've obviously, you've, you've gone into the iPad program. What was, um, uh, in terms of the iPad program, what, what was the, the, um, the trigger to actually go ipads what what why did you go ipads i think at the time our head of school recognized the importance of our children being really digitally literate and really confident to use technology as they grow and as they get older either in education or in their lives um, so they made a choice at the time to kind of think about what's the best thing to do we were predominantly a windows based school but we knew that iPads were easy to use and easy to manage from a um, from a school point of view and really secure. And that's obviously with so many vulnerable children, we wanted to have secure devices that they could use to access the internet, but also we could manage what they could see, what they couldn't see very easily. Um, 
And one of the aspirations we had at the time, which I think um, Mr. York at the time would have probably spoken to you about, Richard, is becoming one of the few Apple distinguished, distinguished, if I can get my words out, schools. And there's not many SEN schools that have that badge. So we're in a kind of a two to three year transition where we're trying to move our children from having no devices to be kind of completely confident using uh, an Apple product, which we chose to be a, an iPad over a MacBook, for example. Um, so that was our, our initial thing. And, and what we found is that our children, so every single one of them has an iPad, by giving them that responsibility of their own iPad, their own keyboard, their own Apple Pencil, which is quite an expensive little kit, that it's really improved their responsibility. They've taken ownership of them. We have very, very few that have, over the last two years, had any damage at all. We have a few keys that are missing from keyboards, but not because children are angrily popping them out. They've just been used and fallen out over time. So it was that improve their digital confidence in the long term, but also give them some responsibility, some ownership of quite an important thing that they could do some of their schoolwork on. So that was probably the initial vision, yeah, I'd say so. No, I mean, that's great. Yeah. And uh, the, I think that is a real key, especially with the, the you know, knowing the type of students that you are working with. Um, and um, so, so really, obviously we've looked at responsibility and how the iPads can help that. And obviously, when you're looking at your digital skills and how the uh, uh, the students um, are improving their digital skills constantly as a result of the iPad. But um, have the iPads supported uh, different types of learning needs and how have the iPads supported the different types of learning needs in the school? Because obviously you've got different things going on with different students within the school. Yeah. Yeah, so right from the outset, we were able to just set up the iPads um, for each class. So some of our classes where we've got more profound needs, they've got a different home screen experience and a different app experience to some of our older children who need different things. So just from that point of view, we were able to tailor, once we knew what people needed and were using, we were able to tailor the iPads to the children in their groups. And then in terms of kind of the learning needs, the iPads help in tremendous ways. Some of our children aren't very confident at presenting information, but are very good at creating a keynote or you know, a PowerPoint to present information. And then they can have text to speak, speak out their information. So if they've got a concern or a worry about their own voice or their capability of reading, they can use the built-in software to present. Some of the other children have been able to really kind of get ingrained into video making and and um, stop motion animations. And some of the other children have been able to kind of really showcase a love for making music and things like that. So the iPads at every level have been tailored with apps to suit the classes that they're in and the teachers and support staff's needs, but then also to kind of um, encourage the children to use them to present and share their information. We also have Apple TVs in every room. So the children can connect their device up to the main screen and very quickly show their classmates a piece of work, whatever it might be, and get a little bit of kind of kudos from everyone, but also they can get a bit of feedback from their peers, which is really lovely to see that they're able to say, I like that bit, but what if you change that bit? And being able to take on that feedback, because that's something that happens in life. They're going to go at some point, somebody's going to say, that's okay, but I need you to change that. And if we can get them into the habit of accepting that, again, we're setting them up for that better bit down the further end of their lives. In terms of challenges, what kind of challenges have you faced with uh, with using the iPad within the classroom? And uh, you know, how, I mean, you, you did mention that obviously we've mentioned that idea of responsibility. Um, are, are are the students um, have have you got challenges with the students in terms of the iPads or, or teaching and learning challenges? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, initially when we bought them in, I think. Everyone, every young person that's got a tablet has probably got it as a bit of a reward thing or a chill out item. So it's, they might have it at home and it's for watching, say, YouTube kids or playing games on. So when we gave out iPads initially, I think all of the children thought, great, I've got all these fun games on there. And as we refined what was on the iPads and then kind of really gave a clear these are the apps that you can use at this part of the day. These are the apps in this part of the day. Children were able to understand that actually this is a this is a work thing. So as an example of an app that links really nicely to maps, we've used a, or 
used a service called Prodigy, which is a really great role-playing game that, that embeds lots of maps. And it's one of those ones that does it in a sneaky way. So it's not as obvious for the children, but it's really good for them to be able to do a bit of work. So initially it was that. And we're at a point now where the children know that the iPads are used in lessons for researching, presenting, and creating. And then at the end of the day, there's certain things that they can go on as a bit of free time, but they are all typically linked to learning. So you know, with the class that I work with, once we've finished all the lessons in the afternoon, if they have a free time, they can use Scratch to code games and hack. They're still using it as a learning device. The other big challenge we had was an infrastructure point of view was our um, internet. So we had to spend some time thinking about improving our internet service, and making sure that it was capable because we suddenly went from this old internet service where there would be nine or 10 laptops connecting to it at once to suddenly those nine or 10 laptops plus at any given time, maybe 50 iPads. So we had to just do some upgrades to our own internal internet service. But other than that, challenges wise, we were really clear with the children what they were used for. They all signed with their adults um, a contract to say this is how they would look after it. And at the end of each day, we keep the iPads on site and make sure they're charged for the following morning. We run all the software updates, all of the app updates. So no one's missing anything. We have the odd connection issue, but we're, our staff are quite confident to be able to deal with that now. So, you know, an Apple Pencil is not connecting or a keyboard. We know how to troubleshoot. Oh, no, I mean, that's great. And, and I know as, as being involved with the training, it is important that, you know, that, that all the staff are actually part of that whole process and being able to troubleshoot when they need to. So it saves a lot of time on uh, the sort of the technical people within the school to be able to, to solve those yeah. problems. So when, I mean, when we first, oh, sorry, which I was just going to say, when we first started the kind of journey with, with the Apple products, we asked that all staff, even those not in a class, completed their Apple badge for iPads. So they did this, I think it was the six modules of how to use, how to troubleshoot an iPad and then how to use the six most common apps. And they're the ones that we use the most in school. So although it was a bit difficult at first because staff weren't too confident by going through that process, they felt more comfortable to then troubleshoot the children. We're now at a point where the children that have been here for a couple of years can pretty much troubleshoot for each other really well and the staff Obviously, you know, the iPad is doing some fantastic things within the school. Um, this webinar is really about that, how, how the iPad can um, be embedded across all types of learning. So all types of learners. So whether they've, I mean, whether they've got, whether their students like the, the ones that are in your school or whether they're mainstream students, they all have the same, they have the same tools within the iPad. Um, so, I mean, it's really good to hear some of the stuff that you're doing that the iPad is having that effect within your school. Um, do you have any examples of, of some really great stuff that the students have been doing? Yeah, so we, we use it in, in across all subjects. Just if there's no mandate that says you have to use iPads in these lessons, but what we kind of, we have now is teachers that are comfortable to think, or I might use the iPad to do that bit, or I might use an app on the iPad to do that bit. So as an example in PE, we do lots of filming in slow-mo, and we do lots of kind of cool time lapses of activities and the children can watch back their um, attempts and then critique themselves. Uh, in cooking, we use uh, the iPads to follow recipes. There's some really good recipe apps that allow you to kind of move on when you're ready and they have a visual and a verbal sort of audio cue of what to do. In terms of the children, so the children are really fantastic at using books that they can then share with their classmates. And from that, they're really great at making animations. So we've got a lot of children that are able to sketch using those apps or using the sketching apps and create animations of things that we're talking about in lessons. So a volcano erupting could be an animation that's made with the different things that's happening. Um, we've had some different animations of characters moving through a scene following a story that we're looking at. We also have um, a small number of children that are making kind of help videos. So if a child's trying to use uh, Scratch or an, act or an app, there's a help video made by one of the peers in the school that says, click on this button, then this will come up, you can click on that. Right. Um, we have that. And we have lots of children in the minute that are really loving creating music and starting to lay more and more detail into garage band tracks. So that music has been something that sometimes the children have struggled to really get into. And by giving them the chance to kind of be their own music creator on this app and then transfer it to our physical music room where we have the musical resources that they can then record and add in, they can see how the two worlds kind of 
very intertwined. But we use it across all subjects. Um, even in MFS, we've got some really great apps for French where the children can talk and it will listen and give feedback to how they're talking. So there's lots and lots of ways. And, you know, there's a hundreds of thousands of apps out there that we're always trying to explore and use. We've recently, as Richard knows, um, brought in some augmented reality maps for geography. So as the children scan their iPads over, the maps come to life with animals and seasons and food chains and uh, to poetry. So, the, the, you know, the, the mountain ranges, the trees, it's really fantastic. And for our children, that immersive kind of world that AR gives them alongside the other apps, it really gets them brought into the learning. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's some, there's some of my examples. Yeah, no, I mean, um, all of that stuff with the AR, and I, I know I was there a, a couple of weeks ago talking to the staff about some of the AR stuff that you're doing, and I know that mapping tool that you used, I saw that in action, and it's, mm. it's really, really effective. A um, couple of more things then, just before we finish, is uh, how have the staff um, uh, embraced the, the, the technologies, the, the iPad technology? That's a really good question. So I think initially when we bought it in, because we bought in uh, one to one uh, iPad deployment for children and then we did one iPad for class teams I think initially they were maybe a bit worried because it's quite a big deal to go from pretty much no technology like no iPads no tablets to suddenly everyone's got a tablet and they were probably worried that they would suddenly need to become experts in how to use every function of the iPads and it's really not the case by giving them uh, the staff some training early on on that these are the, the basic things that you might need to do on an iPad. You know, how can I print something? How can I see a file? How do I copy something? So they get used to the day-to-day -day operations. And then by allowing staff over a period of a half term to complete their Apple badges, they gradually became more confident. And because the children are naturally inquisitive and naturally figure things out on technology, they were really able to support the staff. They were to, oh, so, so it's that. And I think that rid of our two year cycle, the staff's confidence to use them is, is much better because they know that they don't need to know everything, mm -hmm. that they can kind of go, well, let's figure it out, let's have a look. There's no, you know, there's no ownership to say, you need to know every app, everything on it. We're trying different things as we go. Um, so the staff here were initially a bit worried about how much they need to learn. And then now, you can go into any class and ask a member of staff, could you just give us a hand with this? And if they don't know, they would point you to the child or children that absolutely could help you. So staff confidence with the iPads is, is, is really, really good. And I'm really confident. <laughs> fantastic. Well, that's fantastic, Mike. Uh, this, uh, you know, um, the, it, and, and, and having that experience myself of working with the staff in the school, I've actually seen, you know, seen that happen. And it really is from that first day when I came in to where we are now, they, the school's come on leaps and bounds, which is great, because that is always then going to support the students uh, and, and uh, with the teachers and learning in the school. Um, just to finish off then, just to finish, um, thank you so much, Mike, for, uh, for, for doing this for me. But it's been a, a real pleasure speaking to you. And, um, uh, and and listening to how you are using the iPad in the classroom with the students at a school such as yourselves that's having, you know, the, the needs that your students have. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mike. That was fantastic insight in what you are doing at Romansfield School in Milton Keynes. I've been extremely lucky. While I've been working at Jigsaw 24, I've had the opportunity to work with many, many schools around the country. And while I've been working with the schools, I've had the opportunity to look at the different features within accessibility. Over the last year, I have worked with various schools on the SEND provision. One school during lockdown requested I worked with individual students and their parents. So I spent one whole day working with six students and parents on how they could really utilize the iPad. I spoke to students that had a range of issues from visual and audible problems to organization skills. One student did stand out above the others. I was told that this student never engages with much when it comes to learning. So on the Zoom call, I wanted to try and engage him as much as possible. I asked him what he'd like to do. His answer gave me that hook. He loved to play a Japanese game called Yu-Gi-Oh. We then investigated this. 
he then began to open up. He showed me the apps he uses and the website that he goes to to play the game. I then used this as an opportunity for him to really utilize the power of the iPad. I showed how he could record the screen and therefore created his own tutorials. I challenged him to make a tutorial that would show me how to play the game. And when I told him he could use these videos to create his own YouTube channel, he was sold. The learning hook for him was his, was his interest. It is then up to us to find a way to link this to what we want him to learn. In these cases, it was creating a video and we could give instructions and show others how to play the game, explaining using those skills. That's what he was learning in order to be do, able to do these, this task. This could then be extended to using subtitles and perhaps translating into different languages. The whole purpose was looking at ways that he can get more views. He was learning and his mind, he was learning and in his mind on his terms. This type of engagement can be crucial for students like this. The iPad can engage this type of learning. It enables the creativity. We just need to tap into it. I'd like to now demo some of the accessibility features from this. I'd like to now demo some of the accessibility features on the iPad, the features that you would have seen on the slide previously Let's look at the options and focus on voice recognition. So this is my iPad and I now want to go into the accessibility features which are in the settings. So let's tap on the settings and then scroll down here to accessibility. And there it is right there. So let's tap on accessibility. And you can see here, there are lots of different options that you can choose from. As you go down this screen, you've got vision, physical and motor, and then you've got hearing and general. So you can explore any of these settings by just going into the settings and having a look and see what they do. But I'd like to focus on a few of these settings right now. So let's first of all go into spoken content. So I'm gonna tap on spoken content. And as you can see here, there are an option here says speak selection. So I'm gonna make sure that that is turned on and speak screen is also turned on. We've also got the option here for a speech controller. That's going to allow us to control the speech with a menu when we look at the speech controlling on the iPad. Highlight content. This will allow us to choose what we want highlighted when the iPad is speaking back the content on the screen. Typing feedback. This is very useful because the iPad will read back certain characters depending on what you choose on this screen. Voices, when we go into voices, this gives you the option to change the voices for the different languages that you might use on the iPad. You can see here, English, I've got Moira actually selected here, which is an Irish accent. There it is, Moira there. So you can choose whichever one you want. You can see there's South African here, there's the US. We've also got Indian, Australian, and obviously English as well. You can change the speaking rate. So if you feel that you want to slow it down or speed it up, you can do that. And there's also the ability to add pronunciations in there as well. We've got these set up, now let's see them in action. So what I'm gonna do is go back to accessibility. We've got spoken content. We've got those options turned on, speak selection and speak screen. Now let's go to a note and let's see this in action. So I'm gonna open up notes and here is a brand new note. So let's give this a title. Let's press the return button so now what we can do is we can utilize the voice recognition tools on the iPad. I'm just gonna bring up the keyboard for the iPad. So let's tap on the keyboard. And as you can see on the keyboard now, we've got this microphone option. 
So now what we can do as teachers, we can ask the students to, to speak what they want to say in their writing. So let's do that now. Once upon a time, there was a little old man, full stop. One day he decided to go for a walk down to his local shop, full stop, new paragraph. When he was at the shop, he purchased a loaf of bread and some milk, full stop. Okay, so as you can see, as I was speaking there, you could see the text forming on the screen. One other thing that you may have noticed is that I used the terms for the punctuation. So when I wanted a full stop, I said full stop. When I wanted a new paragraph, I said new paragraph. And then it automatically did that. Now that's a really good way that you can help the students understand punctuation. So another benefit of using this facility. Okay, so now once I've got this written, I can actually now select the text. So I'm gonna select all this text. As you can see, I've got this speak button and I can get the iPad to read back what I've written. So let's do that now. Once upon a time, there was a little old man. One day he decided to go for a walk down to his local shop. When he was in the shop, he purchased a loaf of bread and some milk. So the students can get the iPad to read back what they've written. It's a great feature in accessibility that allows the students to really focus on the content of their writing. Now, one other thing that they can do with this is use the space bar as like a mouse. So if I keep my finger on the space bar, the cursor now can be moved around the screen and they can put that cursor anywhere to edit something. So what they might want to say, instead of saying little old man, we can put the cursor here and we can re erase that and just say an old man. Or we could add another adjective in there. Brave old man. So that allows us using the space bar here to edit the document effectively without actually having a mouse plugged into the iPad. So that's how we can use the voice recognition functionality on the iPad to support student learning with their literacy. This will also work across all of the apps. So if they're doing this in Pages or Keynote, Numbers or any of the other apps, this can be used as well, alongside Microsoft or Google Apps in addition. So now let's go back to the settings of the iPad. Let's go back into accessibility. And what I'd like to show you now is a tool specifically really for younger children. One of the problems with the iPad at times is to do certain things on the iPad, you want it a little bit more accessible to the students. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into touch here and we're gonna turn on assistive touch. Now what that will do, it will bring up this little button in the corner. Now that can be moved anywhere on the screen. Now that button has got various different things that you can set it to do. So we can customize this by tapping on customize top level and then add what we want. So if I wanted to add other things, I can click add, press the add key here and then I've got a list of different options there I can add to this um, assistive touch menu. The one thing that I do like is the ability to put a screenshot. Now with younger children, taking a screenshot on an iPad is quite tricky. They have to press the home button and the off button at the same time. Whereas if you've got assistive touch, you can tap on assistive touch. You can make sure that that is one of the settings and then tap the screenshot and there we go, that is a screenshot that we've taken. So it makes it much easier to do those kind of things. And as well as that, there are various other things you can actually set for assistive touch within this menu here. So that is assistive touch on the iPad. So other things that we can look at within the accessibility menu, if we go back from touch here, back to accessibility. Now there's options for zoom and magnifier. So Zoom will allow you to turn on Zoom and you can see these are the things that it will do. I'm not going to turn it on now, but I just wanted to make you aware of those things that it can do. 
there are various different options in the Zoom that you can actually look at. Okay, there are various other things, display and text size. You can change certain settings here, make larger text, look at larger text, and you can make it very big by turning on a larger text accessibility sizes. And then also we've got color filters. Now, color filters are very powerful. It allows you to work with children that might have color blindness. A good instance of this is when I was working with a teacher a few months ago and he tried this and then he got quite emotional when he said that he managed to see red for the first time in his life. That was quite a moment and that can happen with the students as well. So one last thing I'd like to show you is if we go into Safari and I'm going to go into one of these uh, options here. So let's choose one of these um, articles and we've got this article here but when you look at any article you have all of the stories on the right hand side so all of these stories so what I'd like to do is I like to turn on what we call reader view you can do that by tapping on these two little A's in the corner of Safari and then go to show reader view and what that's going to do is going to show the document in a PDF kind of format. Now, what you can also do with this is take a screenshot. So I'm gonna use assistive touch to do that, but you could just take a screenshot in the normal way. So I'm gonna to go to there, take a screenshot, and there's my screenshot. Now let's go into the screenshot. Now, if you just leave it as it is, you just take a picture of the screen. Whereas I actually want to choose full page. So let's choose full page. And now that has taken a screenshot of the whole web page. So we can scroll that down and we can see the whole web page here. Then we've also got this ability here to actually highlight. So I've got a highlight here so I can annotate maybe some of the keywords on that document. Like so. So if I wanted to annotate some of this, I can do that. And I can use the other tools as well to annotate different things on my document. Once we're done, we can press the done button and save that PDF to our files and then access it from our files app. I'm going to delete this one as it is because I don't actually want it and delete that like so. Another thing we can do, because we turned on speak screen, we can swipe two fingers down from the top of the screen here. If we touch two fingers and now Lady Lavinia Nars, ex High Court Judge Widow in anonymity until charge call. So we can get the iPad to read back anything that's on the screen. So that's how you can use the reader view on the iPad and how you can get the iPad to read back what you've got on the screen. So that concludes this webinar. I hope you've managed to get some very good tips. I'd like to thank again Mike Warner for joining us. Um, in the webinar and giving his experiences of how that school, Romansfield School, are using the iPad across the school, getting every learner doing some great creative things with the iPad. So thank you very much for watching and I hope again to see you soon in a future webinar. Take care. Bye-bye.